Right, so I'm back with another episode of Top 5 Mods, the weekly is series where I look at a Top 5 of Mods. It's actually a Top 10 this week, not a Top 5. I clearly need to cancel this series. It's never been, and it will never actually be, a Top 5. I've lied to you all, I just can't take this any longer. <laughs> eh, just kidding, let's get to the mods. Now the Valentine Detective Agency tracked down the infamous Fallon's Basement Heist Mastermind. So I was forced to get out of my shitty little good neighbor apartment. The place is swarming with robotic cops as we speak. Thus I was forced to find a new house once again. And I found one in Cambridge. The Cambridge Bungalow Player Home. Just go to the little house on the northeastern end of Cambridge, jump over the fence and walk around to the porch and casually blow the lady's brains out with a double barrel shotgun. Right now that should give me a house for the next few days, I gotta really just lay low. And as I said, the funds are run dry, I have to improvise for these houses now. Anyways, other than brain bits, you've also got a power armor station, a dock house, and a barbecue on the porch. So once you're done admiring that, walk past the tiny skull fragments and walk up to the door. Now this door is locked for some reason, the lady left the key on the goo in the hardware store across the street. So once you've acquired that key, you can go on inside. And once you're there, off on the right you've got a crafting section with a little marine armor figurine. Also, a periodic table of elements. This one does not talk to me though. Off on the left you've got a kitchen section along with a dining table with some very atmospheric lighting. There's also a miniature Takahashi on the shelf to inspire you while you're cooking. And if that is not decorative enough for your kitchen, you've also got a row of sodas on the fridge. Right next to the kitchen there's also some mud fruit plants you can snack from, and to the right of that you've got a little office space with a bunch more figurines. Then you've got a luxurious little living room section with a fireplace you can actually turn on. And to the right of the entrance you've got the bedroom, along with a teddy bear with a helmet, and in case you get thirsty at night, there's a bottle of vodka and a glass right there. And to top it off you get a bathroom with a water purification system and a bathtub you can actually drink out of. There's also a My First Infirmary in the bedroom, but you can't use it without purchasing the license first. So in order to acquire the license, you've got to go to your terminal. Now this terminal is pretty cool, you can turn on the lights with it, you can sort out your shit, and you can purchase the medtech equipment licenses there. Unfortunately, they do cost money, so I'm gonna have to find a pirated copy around somewhere in the wasteland. Unfortunately, the internet is down, so that's quite problematic. But someday, I might be able to use my infirmary. But yeah, overall this house looks pretty good, it's pretty cozy and not too over the top. It should be a pretty comfortable place to stay until the Valentine Detective Agency tracks me down. Well now that we got a brand spanking new house, it's time to go clothes shopping again, to get something to put into my new locker. So go back to Diamond City in your power armor, fend out the angry town folk that want to murder you for some reason, and head into Fallon's basement, the crime scene. Now the only problem is that the entirety of the angry mob will follow you inside, so you'll have to deal with that situation. Just make sure you also bring enough 5mm ammo. But if you look closely amongst the bodies, you should see the new outfit you want. So pick those up and once you're done, it's time to destroy some incriminating evidence. So just throw down one of your Gamsung Galaxy S8s and be sure to duck. Now if you survive the blast, it's time to head on out and try on your brand spanking new outfits. You may have to wash them first though, but we've got the Wasteland Ranger Outfit dash vanilla dash CBBE dash body slide dash HSB dash more letters, which adds in a Wastelandy outfit. It gives you a stylish tank top, two pistol holsters and some tight pants, with some knee pads and a combat knife in case things get hairy. On your left hip you get a radio and on your right hip you get some binoculars and a canteen. And if you turn around you can see that I still need to wash out the bloodstains. But the top of the interior outfit you also get a little beret with a Union Jack flag. An the entire outfit is modular so you've got the base clothes, the armor, a cap, a tool belt and the harness you can actually swap out for a backpack too. So if you want to look a tiny bit cooler you can also drop the beret and put on the backpack. Which will give you a tactical sniper rifle to go with your holstered pistols. And if you don't think the tank top is stylish enough, you can also swap this out for some other clothing. Like a nice iron flannel shirt without bloodstains. So overall this outfit looks good, it's nice and modular and thereby pretty tactical. But we need something a tiny bit sexier than just a beret, so fortunately we also picked up the freebooter outfit. Which really allows me to show off my abs. So this outfit has some spiky shoulder pieces, a decorative slave collar, leathery pants and formidable shin protection. 
Not much in the form of chest protection, but the formidable shin protection should make up for it. Now if you think that is just a tad bit too breezy, you can also go for the tank top variant, which gives you a green tank top with some Fallon Basement Massacre bloodstains on it. If you scrub hard enough though, you should be able to get them out. But overall these two outfits look pretty cool, and if you're planning on taking a trip to Nuka World anytime soon, it should make you fit right in. Well now that I'm somewhat protected and wanted for about 12 different kinds of homicide, I need some guns. And oh boy, have we got some guns this week. So make your way over to the first house down from the Red Rocket in Concord, go upstairs and pick up the neatly placed pistol there. Then also be sure to pick up the pellet of weapons right next to it. So first up we've got the IF-54 Battle Rifle Redux, which is a redux of a weapon mod that was released some time ago. This is a pretty customizable battle rifle, you've got two base variants, the first one being the plain variant which can fire 5mm of 308 if you want a tiny bit more punch. The second variant is the Beowulf variant, which fires 50 cal for those who want even more punch. Other than the calibers, the two variants are pretty much the same, but calibers is not all, you can customize a few more things, you can shorten or elongate the barrel, you can add different tactical stocks, including foldable ones, attach a bigger magazine, put on some different scopes, add your favorite barrel attachments, choose the best paint job to fit in with your environment, and go with FMJ, JHP, AP, or JSP rounds. Just choose whichever letters you find most interesting. You can pretty much create the Beowulf you want. So I put some wooden housing on my plain IF-54 and some green paint on my Beowulf. The gun itself looks good, the reloading animation fits, and the sounds are pretty beefy too. Overall, a fine firearm. But sometimes we want to get a tiny bit more personal. So we also got the trench gun. So this mod adds in a shotgun which will allow you to dispose of your enemies cleanly at close range. Or maybe not so cleanly now that I think about it. Now this shotgun is also pretty customizable. You can elongate the barrel, go for a pistol grip or a foldable SPAS-12 stock, put a very big scope on top, go for slugs or buckshot, and you can even attach a suppressor for those who want to be like Javier Bardem. So I made one small variant with a cute little bayonet and one extra long tactically suppressed variant. Overall this gun looks good and it's got a nice and beefy sound effect. The only downside is that the reload animation does not fit in, but that is about it. Other than that, this is a fine weapon for taking out Brappertons. But we're not done with weapons just yet, we've also got the 1022 pistol, which adds in a tiny little pistol that can actually dish out some considerable damage. This gun isn't particularly customizable, but you can change the ammo type from 10mm to 44 and attach a round drum. It does, however, look pretty stylish, with engravings on the magazine, a low profile, and a sleek wooden finish. So I made myself a plain variant and a tactical variant to be ready for any situation. This thing has a pretty high fire rate and with the normal magazine the reloading animation actually fits. With the drum mag, eh, not so much. But overall it's a cool sleek looking little SMG with a sting. Good for mowing down Brappertons when you just hold down the trigger. But finally, we've got the one handed revolver. Which is not a weapon mod, it's an animation mod. For revolvers. In one hand. Yes, it's pretty much right there in the name. So this mod changes the revolver animations from two-handed to one-handed, to make it look just that much cooler. It also makes you spin a gun right before holstering it, bringing you just that much closer to being an actual cowboy. But that is not all, now when you spin around you actually point the gun upwards, which is way cooler. So if you're an aspiring cowboy or you just like dressing up as one, this might be the mod for you. Anyway, speaking of cowboys, have your companions ever gotten in your way? Have you ever just wanted to take out your frustration on them? But with push away companions, you can in fact push away companions. Simply walk up to a companion, press the reload key, and send them off flying. So in fact, all your companions up to Vault 111, walk up to your companion of choice and push them away. To add insult to injury, flip them off too. With this mod, you can also send your companions flying off in rapid succession. It's a great way to relieve some stress. There's also an optional file to push away anyone, not just companions. Don't like Mama Murphy? Well, push her away. Get out of my way. Does Tinker Time just give you the creeps? You gotta be careful, man. The Institute is everywhere. Well, you can now push him away. Move. Hooray! We're bug free. Ow! Oh! See you well, bro, man. Well, way. push it away too. The way. possibilities are truly endless. <laughs> but arguably, the best thing this mod allows you to do is push Preston off a cliff. Move. Fuck you. This might be my new favorite mod. Well, now that I've literally invited the Valentine Detective Agency to track me down, it's time for some heavier armor. So at number one this week, we've got the Network, which adds in two heavy-duty armors. To get your hands on these armors, you'll have to go to the Network building, close to the edge of the glowing sea, and once you're in there, you'll have to fight your way through some robots, some of which might explode. 
Anyways, you have to pick up the holotape password to open up the vault containing the Mark V survival suit power armor. And close to that password, you can also find the HKE Mark IV survival suit, which is not power armor. So with your new armor, you should be more than well equipped to deal with the death flow that's waiting for you outside. The power armor looks pretty decent, it's got a grey carbon fiber-ish color scheme going, with some red lining. The eyes do look a tiny bit flat though. If you don't like power armor, you can also opt for the Mark IV, which has a long coat and a hood, some cool looking gloves and acceptable shin protection. Overall these armors look decent, not particularly amazing, but you do get a dungeon with some backstory sprinkled on top of it, so that is pretty cool. Well that was it for the top 5, which wasn't really a top 5. But as always, we've also got a bonus mod. So this week we've got the Flamingo, a Finocopterous melee weapon, which adds in a big pink flamingo you can beat people with. What more could you want from modding? Now to get your hands on this thing, you'll have to bring Ringo out to that same cliff and just give him a little nudge. Then all that's left to do is some uh, stuffing and finding a very sturdy stick, and you've got your very own Finocopterous melee weapon which is pretty effective, and stylish too. Really great for just hitting those home runs. Well that was it for this week's match, yet again some very solid mods in there. Will the Valentine Detective Agency ever stop tracking me down? Will I ever settle down in a home? And did Preston make it down in one piece? Sign up potentially next week, or in like two weeks, or someday. But until then... So this is that section where I talk about random things I suppose, so yeah I was sort of late with this episode again, but then again I was gone for like a weekend and I didn't really have time to make this episode, but now I did make this episode so it's finally here. So uh, yeah that's that. Now, apparently there's something shitty going on with the YouTube algorithm or something, they changed something. I'm not entirely sure, but I did notice like a drop in views overall, so that might have something to do with that, like recommended videos and whatnot. I don't know, I heard a bunch of people talk about it, but apparently you can help me out by clicking that little bell button right next to the subscribe button, and apparently that does wonders, I'm not sure what it does because I never clicked it, but be sure to click that button, magic things will happen. Other than that, you know, always likes and comments help out tremendously, uh, also favorite, be sure to send this video to like everybody you know, just email it to your grandpa and grandma, they'll surely want to watch it too, and uh, I think I ticked down the list here. Apparently the new thing to do though is like ask for likes at the beginning of the video before you provided anything. So I should really start doing that. Another thing you gotta do also is set up a like goal. So we gotta set up like a semi-realistic like goal. But we actually gotta do that at the start. So I already filled at this. But can we get eh, at least 500 likes? Preferably 1000. I, I think that's possible depending on the view numbers here. But let's just aim for 5000. And uh, I think that was that. I, I think I ticked every new YouTube box here. But yeah, other than that, I don't really have a lot to talk about. I installed a virtual machine with Linux on my laptop. That was really... Uh, let's not talk about that. That's really not exciting. Anyways, Linux. It's, it's a thing, apparently. It's the thing the IT boys use. I'm not an IT boy, so I wouldn't know. But apparently you can do things with it. And uh, that was that. So yeah, until next time. Be sure to like the video, though. We gotta reach those 1 million likes. It's very important.